Welcome to all our viewers on this, the first Sunday in January. Jenny and I, on behalf of the Church Warden Linda Nicholas and the Church Council of St. Peter's, wish you a very happy New Year and pray that you will receive all God's blessings in abundance as you enter this year with him. Linda Nicholas, who is also our licensed lay minister, is leading us in our service this morning when we celebrate the Epiphany. Linda, over to you. Thank you, Garth. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Epiphany service. And it's a pleasure to share worship with you this morning. Now, we may not know what 2021 will bring but I would like to take the opportunity to wish you all happiness 
peacefulness and hopefulness in the new year. And now we start the service with a line from scripture. And this morning it's from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And it's Ezekiel 1 verse 28. Like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the radiance around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell down, face down, and I heard the voice of one speaking. And now our call to worship. Arise, shine, the light you have been waiting for is here. Darkness has been banished. God's light of hope floods the earth. God's light comes to all. Lord, make us ready to journey to this light. Prepare our hearts to receive this light. Amen. Now I have with me here a star and we'll be talking later of stars and light. But in the meantime, I would like to welcome Helen Jervis and our own band who will set the scene for us this morning. Three kings from Persian lands afar, to Jordan follow the pointing star. And this the quest of the travellers three, where the newborn king of the Jews may be. Full royal gifts they bear for the king, gold, incense, myrrh are their offering. The star shines out with a steadfast ray, the kings to Bethlehem make their way, and there in worship they bend the knee, as Mary's child in her lap they see. Their royal gifts they bring for the king, gold, incense, myrrh, are their offering. Thou child of man, lo to Bethlehem, the kings are travelling, travel with them. The star of mercy the star of grace shall lead thy heart to its resting place. Gold, incense, myrrh thou canst not bring. Offer thy heart to the infant king. Offer thy heart. We three kings of all Traverse of far, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to the perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain. Ceasing never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to the perfect light. Frankincense to offer her by, incense owns a day and sin. Is raising, worship him, God on high. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to the perfect light. Her is mine, its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in 
introducing the kings into the service this morning. Um, they're referred to there as kings, but sometimes they're wise men, magi, sages, lots of different things that, that we call them. But thank you for introducing them for us this morning. Uh, we now come to a time of confession where we can bring to God all of the things that we may have said, thought or done in, say, the last week that have not been pleasing to him. Let's think of those things in our hearts now. With God, there is forgiveness. God of all nations, revealed to us by the wise men. Forgive us when we feel fear from people who may or we think who may be different from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us when we do not make the effort to journey to the end, but give up disheartened. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Forgive us when we do not lay our gifts down, but want to keep them for ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us for being people who choose to walk in darkness. Help us to turn to your revealing light so we may recognise you as being here among us today and always. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And now I'd like to invite Linda McCroy to read us the Old Testament reading and the New Testament readings. And also, we'll be hearing angels from the realms of glory. The first reading is Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 6. The glory of Zion. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hip. 
Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense, and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is Matthew 2 verses 1 to 12. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the peoples, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. 
for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, we have heard your word read to us this morning. Let us discern what that word is telling us, what your will is. And Lord, may we have ears to hear and a heart to receive. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Arise and shine. Well, when Linda read this um, passage from Isaiah chapter 60 to us this morning and started with the words, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. I immediately thought of a lovely picture, a lovely picture of the sun shining and a bright sunny day and imagining a bright tomorrow. This verse paints a lovely, wonderful image where there seemed to be no hope. Suddenly hope arrives in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. And this verse is talking to us. This verse is urging us on. It's a call to action. God is talking to us. He's telling us to respond. If our light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us, we need to shine through. We need to share this light with others around us. He is telling us to arise and shine. In this passage, Isaiah is actually speaking to people who have known defeat and desolation in their time. But here, he sees a time of incredible transformation when Israel will rise out of her darkness and shine. And he uses figurative and poetic language relating to Israel's history as a nation to visualize a post-exilic life in a restored and magnified Zion. This passage speaks of a vision of the ideal theocratic society, a place of God's visible glory in his people, righteousness, justice, prosperity, and unceasing peace and joy, calling the influx of the nations to serve Zion. We are told in verse three, that the nations will come to your light. The Gentiles will come. The King James authorised version of the Bible tells us, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of their rising. 
this light will attract other nations seeking relief from the darkness and will draw Gentiles, the non-Jews, into this light. The imagery is of the dawning of a new day that dispels the fears and gloominess of the night. God's presence is the light that illuminates a new future for God's people. Arise and shine for your light has come. Well, we're reading these words as we're living during a global pandemic with the economic shocks and the emotional shocks that have hit our world. We are reading these words as we see the social changes that have taken place in our lives. We read these words as we contemplate the continuing violence among peoples and nations. We read these words amidst our own personal worries and fears. We may think with so much darkness around us, how are we to believe in this great reversal, this great transformation? How can we recognise God's power that has come into our lives? How can we transmit that great power? Arise and shine, for your light has come. In this passage, Isaiah is telling us that we've been called out of darkness and into the Lord's marvellous light. We've been set apart to belong to the Lord, to live as his people. We have an identity and a purpose in life. Do we really know that? Do I see myself? Do you see yourself? Do we see ourselves in that way? That we have a special calling, that we do not belong in the darkness anymore. Whatever our circumstances may be, the birth of Jesus Christ has brought the light that offers hope to a world of despair. And today we're celebrating Epiphany. Epiphany is actually on Wednesday, but it's celebrated today in the Church of England calendar. And a brief backstory. Long ago, when a man named Herod was king, and after Jesus was born in a town called Bethlehem, there were some Magi, traditionally very wise men, who were sitting in their own countries far away, minding their own business. When one day, a bright star shone in their eyes. It was so bright, none of them could ignore it. Maybe they didn't know if it was burning in the sky or in their own imagination. But they were wise enough to know that it didn't matter. The point was that something beyond themselves was calling them, calling them to take a journey, to respond to a tug that perhaps they'd been waiting for all their lives. And the trouble with stars that beckon us to follow them is that we can never know at the beginning of our journey where that light will lead. Today's invitation is simply arise shine for your light has come. The invitation can appear in various forms, an unexpected opportunity, a chance to do something different, a possibility to explore a long-held desire that may even emerge from a crisis or a loss. Perhaps God is asking us to do something specifically that we've not thought of before. We sense a call, we hear an invitation, we feel a tug, something that beckons us to follow a light to start a journey. 
the Magi began their journey not knowing what the journey would mean or where it would take them. They risked their fortunes and their reputations to travel so far, only to have their purposes nearly thwarted and their lives threatened by a paranoid ruler. They would have faced their own doubts and reproaches on many occasions. They would have experienced uncertainty, reinforced by the ridicule of some along the way who wouldn't have been slow to question the foolishness of following a star. Imagine them camped out at night, questioning the sense of their journey, feeling undermined by threats and the criticisms, pondering their mistakes. Well, when we are unsure about what God wants us to do, we can take great encouragement from the Magi. When we set out on a journey with only the light, a desire, a tug to guide us, if we start with a single step, followed by another, then another, we can believe that the light will somehow lead us on. And this morning, we gather for worship in search of our own epiphanies, big or small, in light of the greatest discovery of all time as we celebrate the arrival of the Magi who followed the star to the Christ child. What a wonderful way to begin a new year together, seeking and searching for God. Both Matthew and Isaiah remind us that the start of another calendar year can be more than just about revelation. It's more than just about resolution. It is about revelation, specifically God's revelation to the world. Revelation is a bit like a moment when we're reading a difficult book, seeking to follow a complicated argument. And then we come across a luminous sentence form from which we can go forward and backward and so attain some understanding of the whole thing. I think Isaiah 6 Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, rise and shine, can be one of those sentences crystallising our experiences of faith. A moment in which an important truth suddenly becomes clear and we can interpret our past and rethink our way forward in the light of it. Now the past makes sudden sense and the future may call for a new direction. The prophet calls our attention to the ways in which God breaks into our world and illuminates our very existence. Look around, the prophet cries, and pay attention. God is here. Yes, here. Our Christmas decorations might soon be packed away, but remember, God among us, Emmanuel, is not packed away in the loft with the boxes, not to be seen until next Christmas. God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit is alive and present with us in our world, here and now. So, rise and shine, and this is news worth getting up for. gets us up in the morning? Is it the pressure of an alarm clock with the knowledge that our day is fully booked with work or school or appointments? Is it the desire to get a lot done on our ever lengthening to-do list? That sounds like me. Or maybe we want to go for a morning run after hearing this morning's Old Testament reading, Isaiah might have helped us take a new direction with our days and with our time. 
belonging with an eagerness for which, for what God is doing or might be doing in our lives or in the world. How may our days be different if we adopted this perspective every morning of looking for God's glory in the world? And you know, even during some of the bleak times that we have seen in this year, in this 2020, we have seen God's glory working in the world many times. So let us bask in that light and be radiant ourselves with hearts that truly are thrilled and rejoicing as verse 5 describes. Isaiah 60 verse 5, then you will look and be radiant, your heart will throb and swell with joy, the wealth on the seas will be brought to you, to you the riches of the nations will come. What might help us look for God's glory in the world? Well, we only need to look to the Magi in Matthew's Gospel. It was a star's light that caught their attention. Their focusing on that light is what put everything else into motion. They knew it was significant and by following it, they were able to discover the greatest news the world has ever known. John 1 verse 14 The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Amen. The prayer is the collect for Epiphany. Let's pray. O oh God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who now, you, now know you by faith, may at last Behold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, and you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all things, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all full of sake became poor. So here I here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together
to the time to affirm our faith, what we believe in. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God. From every tribe and language, from every people and nation, we believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so, Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now I invite John Veal to lead us in prayer. Father, the year 2020 has been a very difficult one due to COVID-19 and Brexit. Many of your children have suffered physically, mentally and financially. But we start the new year 2021 with a new hope in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Epiphany, the manifestation of your Son to us, the Gentiles. Lord, grant us both comfort and joy in this coming year, knowing that you walk with us in both the good times and the bad, knowing that in your power all things are possible, knowing that your blessings are all around us if we choose to look. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray for all our political leaders, locally, nationally and internationally. Grant them wisdom and courage to make wise and selfless decisions. We pray, Lord, there will be a smooth and peaceful handover of power in America. Father, we pray for our church and spiritual leaders. The church needs to adapt to find its place in a changing world. We pray, Lord, that our church leaders will seek your counsel and they will be guided by you in all they do.
Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who have served us in 2020. Many of us have been fortunate enough to stay in the relative safety of our homes, but many have continued to leave their homes and keep essential services running. They have put themselves at greater risk for the benefit of others. Father, we pray that you will keep them all safe and well. We pray too that your hand will guide those developing and testing vaccines. Lord, we also pray for those distributing and delivering them to us. Jesus, we pray for all your children. We pray that you will give us all wisdom and common sense. We pray that everyone will make wise decisions and not take unnecessary risks. Father, help everyone to keep themselves safe and to keep others safe. Lord, we pray for all your creation. This pandemic highlights the damage we have done to our world. We pray it will also be the catalyst for us to do something about it. Lord Jesus, we pray for all the sick and suffering. The pandemic has left many people sick, some with long-term symptoms. The isolation and worry has affected the mental health of others. The impact on the economy has left many with financial concerns. Father, we pray for all these people, that they may find comfort in your arms. We also pray, Lord, that we will find it in our hearts to care for them too. Lord, we bring before you those we know who are sick and suffering. Lord Jesus, we pray for those who have died, and we pray for the bereaved who mourn them. We pray that they can grieve despite the restrictions on funerals. We pray that they can find comfort in your loving arms. Lord, we bring before you those we know who have died, their families and friends. Father, we pray that you will hear our prayers brought to you in faith. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will bring us comfort and joy in the coming year. Amen. Oh.
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will be done, your will be done, your will be done. Your will be done. on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, before we come to the last hymn, I have some notices. This afternoon there will be a service in church at 3 p.m. But do please remember to book with me if you'd like to come. Now I'd like to mention a bit more about the booking system if I may. Um, it is designed so that we know who's coming in compliance with the government track and trace. Um, and if I know how many are in your party, I will know where to seat you for your comfort. And the booking system is not designed to turn people away. And we've never had to do so. I do have some leeway to jiggle things around. So please don't be put off by the booking system. Um, people have to book in most churches in the country at the moment. So um, it's not designed to turn you away please please do remember though to ring me if you can to book if you'd like to come to any of the services um, the sunday morning services will be streamlined from church and you're very welcome to come to that if you would like to but just tell me so i will know to expect you on wednesday there's a time of private prayer between 11 and 1 now, please do come along and you'll be assured of a very warm welcome if you would like to just sit in the church and pray quietly. And I now have pleasure in wishing John Butler a very happy birthday. John's birthday is in this coming week on Wednesday, I believe. So happy birthday, John. And now the last hymn brightest and best of the sons of the morning.
you to everyone who's taken part in the service this morning and thank you for joining us. When the wise men had seen that the star had stopped and they had found their destination, we are told that they were overwhelmed with joy. May we be overwhelmed with joy today. And may we take that joy into our homes, our families and our communities. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us all today and always. Amen. Let us go in light, joy and peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.